Good evening. Hello, Facebook, YouTube world. Welcome to Nights of Three of the Recover All series. I'm feeling better. Thank y'all so much for asking. This your girl, Lady E, checking in, checking in. What's going on? I hope you guys had a fantabulous week. So far, it is hump day, but I pray that your hump day wasn't as bad because my day, as you can tell, was full of joy. I tell you, it is something spectacular when you know how to push back some food, some ideals, some thoughts, some television, some radio things, some books, some people. I wasn't doing too much people in today and said my day from 6 to 6.30 is all about J-E-S-U-S, connecting, communing, come close to me, talk nice to me, be kind to me, show favor to me, and all of that stuff, my day started out spectacular because I started out with God. How did you start your day today? How did you start your day? How did you go throughout your day as the trials and tribulations and the phone calls and the meetings and the unexpected things began to happen? How did you deal with it? Are you using the recovery steps? Are you listening? You leaned all the way in? You plugging and playing those scriptures as necessary? It's okay if you didn't. Grace and mercy. Peace and blessings. We got we 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 we're able to still come back and be redeemed and recover from all of that. So I am not gonna prolong y'all because y'all know I can go all day about how you can redeem your time. Because we talked about that the last time she was on, right? Talking about redeeming your time, and I've been executing the scriptures. And I pray that you guys are not just being hearers of the word, but you're being activators of the word and you're doing what the word says to do. Amen. So we're going to present to some and introduce to others, none other than the mother of this great ministry, Pipes Ministry, which stands for Prophetic Intercession Prayer Enforcer Servants. We are servants of the most high God. So we're going to present to some and introduce to other our very own Prophetess Lawan Smith Harris. Welcome, woman of God. You are muted. I'm on you mute. I'm on mute. I'm on mute. That's when I put the devil on the day mute. <laughs> <laughs> How was your day? Um, my day was a very productive, um, very focused, uh, but it was good. Uh, some amazing things are going on and happening. And so I'm really, really excited about what God is doing in all of these businesses over here in this household. Amen. So, um, we are going to be featured in two other restaurants with yes! so I'm super excited about that. Hallelujah. Yes. Want so, to do it, man? My husband is in here tearing up. The, look, Milwaukee ain't ready. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. He is the he he the chef for the best. Yeah, ready to go ahead and give give God all the glory yes, and speed yes, and yes. Oh, make I everybody know. fluffy. Yeah, well, listen, will. <laughs> to him that will because today was definitely some willpower because I got to hold that cake on the table and I'm just like stop calling my name today oh my right? goodness so I'm like I'm not having you with my coffee today it's so hard you know when you get into a routine and then you yeah. throw that disruption up in there yeah and you, be, you, you I mean you be like scrambling because you're so used to doing something at a certain time and in a yeah. certain way and you know, so you got coffee, cake, yeah, you know, yeah. turn the word on. But, but God is a great disruptor, isn't he? <laughs> God is a great, he's the best disruptor there is. Because yes. he'll come in and throw a monkey wrench in everything you thought you had planned. Well, He'll be I, like, you know what, let me go ahead and stop you dead in your tracks because this ain't that. 
Well, I'm a Proverbs 19, 21 woman, so I yield to the Most High God because Lord knows I have many plans in my heart. No more. Purposes prevail over them all. Over so them he, all. Look, when he start prevailing, I just throw my hands up like this and I surrender. You know, I yep. surrender all to thee, my blessed Savior. That's a battle I ain't trying to fight. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I, ain't trying to, I ain't trying to get in the ring with God. It's whatever you say, JC, I got you. You ain't yeah. got to say it more than once. It's okay. Then you want to use the strong voice. You ain't mm. got to do all that. I, I adhere. I will acquiesce willingly. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And then the prayer for women in worship 2023 Woo! was amazing. Yes, it was. So world outreach June. Look, we're going to be, it's going to be going down in, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin for women of worship with world outreach with uh, Melva Henderson Ministries. And we're talking about wealth. We're talking about health. We're talking about, listen, women going to the next dimension yeah. and the things that God has prepared for us. I'm super excited about that and being a part of that vision and believing God for just some things that, man, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have the thought entered into the heart of man. Yes, so yes, yes. I, I am challenging the women that come on today and listen Listen, I need you to go and if you can attend the nightly services or you can be a part of this in some shape, form or fashion. Um, this is our time. It's our season. The door, the windows of heaven is open for us. The, the the stock market, the, the economy is open for the women. I mean, um, we're, we're, we're in a state where we're about to handle the most money we've ever handled in our entire lives in this generation. So I want to be a part of that. And I want to make sure my hand and my heart is clean so I can be a good steward over the things that God is about to bless us with. Amen and amen. amen. So, Women in Worship, June the 2nd, 2nd, 3rd, and I think the 4th. But listen, I don't do announcements, so I'm going to leave that one alone right there. I'm going to back up. I'm just letting you know I'm excited about it. But you need to go and check out some of the announcements and the blurbs that we have on our Facebook page and in our website. So I'm super excited about that moment. Amen. Amen. So, uh... You guys, that, that that information is going to be coming up at the end. She she <laughs> uber excited because if you was not on the Women in Worship prayer call tonight, man, man, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of FOMO. You got a little bit of fear of missing out, honey, because though that woman of God went in Woo! tonight, man, she went she in been tonight. A she touched everything oh. about. It. The women's finances, vision, your mind, your entrepreneurial spirit, your heart, your your attractiveness to entrepreneurship and wealth. And this is the great wealth transfer that we are in. And if you don't know, you better get in tune. I'm going to let Prophetess do what she do. I'm going to come back and do the announcements for you guys. Grab your pen, grab your pads, have your heart and your ears open. Lean all the way in tonight. I put the questions back out there. You guys, please don't just be a hearer of the word. That's right. Get the word so that you may recover well. We got a work to do. And as women who are birthers, we cannot continue to birth wounded and dis and broken. We can't. We wounded, we're in despair, we're broken, we're hurt. And so we're bleeding on our children, we're bleeding on our marriages, we're bleeding on our future marriages, we're bleeding on the church and the people that's coming in the pews, we're bleeding because we're broken and we need to learn how to recover well. So lean all the way in tonight. This your girl, Lady E, saying I'll check back in a minute. All right, thank you, dear. Uh, I probably am going to have her pop in and read. Um, but anywho, 
Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for being an awesome God. We thank you for being a prayer answering God. We thank you, God, that you're leaning in and your ears are inclined to hear what's on the hearts of your children, Father God. And we thank you, Lord God, that you have not left us without a remedy, Lord God. You are our redeemer. You are our healer. You are our sustainer. You are our shield and our buckler. You are the lifter of our heads, God. And we thank you for that one tonight, Father God. We say that you are welcome, Father. We don't want to do anything without you, God. We don't want to do anything without your presence, without your power, without your anointing, Father God. Let the words that are spoken on tonight be impactful. Let it penetrate the hearts and minds of us that need to believe again, Father God. Resuscitate some things on tonight, Father God. Some visions, some dreams, Lord God. And even some some hearts need to be resuscitated, Father God. You are, Lord God, you are, Lord God, you're the expert at recovery, Father God. And we lean into you, Father, so that we can hear your instructions, so that we can hear your plans, and so that we can receive, Lord God. We don't want to be like the man at the pool, Lord God, waiting for something else to happen, Lord God. Nothing else has to happen. You did it all already on Calvary, God, and it's up for us to pick up our bed and walk on today, Father God. And we thank you for that anointing. We thank you that there's an immediate anointing being released right now as we are listening and hearing your voice and hearing your word, Lord God, that we don't have to wait another minute or another second to be made whole, God. But Lord, your word says that we ask we and we receive that we shall have it in your son Jesus name father God and Lord I just thank you for being just being so faithful God I thank you Lord God that you have not forgotten the names of many father God that, that our names are written in the palm of your hand father God in the name of Jesus Christ father we just thank you God for a complete work for it is a, a, a it is finished anointing lord god being released lord and we thank you god in jesus name amen and amen and amen praise jesus and so if you don't know now you know we are praying ministry we got to pray and we got to prophesy and we got to intercede and we've got to enforce the will of god we've got to be enforcers of the word and then we want to come and serve with all humility with not without without looking somebody looking at someone sideways or judging them for whatever state that they may be in on today but we are servants of the most high god he said let the greatest among you be the servants and so if you're gonna if you're ever participating in anything with pipes ministries we want to serve you and serve you well, whether it's through the word, whether it's through prayer, or whether it's through whether it's through our events, whether it's through workshops, or even whether it's through business. Did you know we also have services? Yes, you we have services. So you got to visit our website for that. But I'm gonna stay in my lane because again, I don't do announcements. I'm gonna do what God called me to do, and that's to teach the word on tonight. And so we're back at it again with recover and recover well amen and so last week i issued out some homework and a challenge so we before i get into that i'm just gonna do a little kind of little bit of um review from the last two and then i also want to bring to light that it appears that the next following monday happens to be a holiday so I'm not good with announcements or keeping up with man's calendar either. I'd be thinking about what God want to do. And so um, I'm thinking we may have to reposition next Monday. I'm not for sure. We may come on earlier. But listen, keep your ears and your eyes open so that you can hear um, how we're going to position our final class. Okay. <clears throat> so reviewing. So we're talking about this guy named Jeroboam who should have been could have been but was not and so um we 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 have been journeying with this man that was appointed to be king in israel 
after the death of Solomon. He was a servant in the house of Solomon that God made a covenant with, that if you would lean here and obey my words, my commandments, I would make your house great. I would be, there is nothing that you you ask that I won't do for you. That's the kind of agreement that God came into with Jeroboam. But something happened along the way. And so we explored in our first conversation, talking about um, not being in a place of allowing trauma to make us forfeit the promises of God, you know, and to and and to cause fear to come in and draw us away from God. Now, there obviously was relationship with God at one point because God made a covenant with him. And so God makes covenant with people that communicate with him, that come to him. Um, he's such a gentleman, you know, where he's not going to force himself on us, but he makes himself available. He always makes a way of an escape and he always has a plan. And so Jeroboam was in God's plan, but something happened where, where the plan got changed. And so um, we have been journeying through that, that idolatry drew him away, fear of the people turning to another king, their heart turning to another king. When ultimately, how many of you know that when we're set in a place or a position, it's not for our glory, it's for the glory of God anyway. And so if I'm the leader of anything, amen, although I'm occupying and being a steward over what God has called me to, it's still my responsibility to direct the people back to him. Because without him, I am nothing. Without him, we are nothing. Without him, Jeroboam could not have been king. So it is God that promotes. It is God that puts in place. It is God that anoints and also appoints. Even though the people cried out for a king, it was still God that put that king in place. So we're not doing anything without God's hand being involved, without God's plane being evoked. So here again, we have Jeroboam who literally just kind of lost, he, he lost his square. And we, we looked over in 1 Kings 11, uh, chapter 11, verse 14. And then we journeyed over to chapter 11, um, verse 38, um, that talked about the promise that he had with God. And then I want us today if we can pick up at 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 27. And if my lovely host would come back on and read that for me, that'd be fantastic, great people. I'm looking, um, you said you, and I know you want the King James Version, right? So I'm pulling up the King James Version. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> First Kings chapter 12, verse 27. Yes. All right. And it reads, if this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord even unto Rehob uh, Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Read 28. Okay. And, uh-oh, I don't know what I just opened. Give me one second. <laughs> I done opened up something else. Okay. Verse 28 says, Whereupon the king took counsel, and made two calves of gold and said unto them, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. O-M-J. So if we're trying to figure out where he went wrong, we looking at 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 27. 
and he starts out with this really mm, sometimes there are some words that's kind of worth avoiding and the word if is a faith killer because it leaves room for a contingency plan instead of the plan of God. Remember when we when when I first came on, I said, "Listen, I'm a Proverbs thir- uh, nineteen twenty one kind of girl. Many are the plans of a man's heart, but God's purposes prevail over them all." If is a faith killer, so he opens up. This this one opens up the can of worms, and this is where we all we go in sideways. Like, yeah, you 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 kind of walking crooked. Like Paul said, you did run well, but who bewitched you? Okay, so this is what happened. It says, if this people go up to sacrifice in Jerusalem, in in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, in another place, now. There are some purposes in which we should have a territorial anointing. There are some cases where that's necessary. But in this case, it wasn't necessary because the people had not determined that that's what they were going to do. He had a point, he had a a worst case scenario going on. How many of you have had some stuff going on in your life and you get in that space where now we got the worst case scenario? Well, if this job don't call me, then I'm going to take this job. And if this job don't call me, then I'm going to start this business. And if this business don't work, I'm going to start on this business. And if this relationship don't work, I'm going to hop over here to this guy. When ultimately, God gave the instructions before we got here. Somebody said the imagination. Yeah. Casting down every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. When trauma happens or when other things outside of God begin to happen, the imagination began to run wild. It begins to it begins to cook up all kinds of uh, doom and gloom kinds of things. It's interesting how it takes more work to get positivity flowing in your imagination than it does negativity. Like you literally got to feed it something. For negativity, you really don't have to feed it anything because we're surrounded by it all day long. Paul said, when I want to do good, evil is present. And I believe Jeroboam wanted to do good, but somehow another evil was present and he gave in to the imagination. If these people leave here, they leave me and they go to Jerusalem to worship their God. Now, first of all, he's saying, hey, Israel, Israel is going to leave. They're going to leave, okay? And they're going to go up to Jerusalem to worship their God. If God made the agreement with you in the beginning, what made you think that the people's hearts could be turned to another king? In the beginning, God gave you the heart of the people because he gave you his commitment and his covenant and his word said the king's heart is in god's hands and he has the ability to turn it whichsoever way he will right amen so limit as much as you possibly can the word if because if talks us out of the original agreement, the original plan that God prepared for us, the plan that per, the, the plan and purposes that prevail over everything. So God's desire for his people was that they would worship him in spirit and in truth anyway. He created us to worship him and he didn't care where we were. So Jeroboam had a contingency plan that cost him the kingdom. Don't have a contingency plan that will cost you the kingdom during your process of recovery. When trauma happens, we need to quickly 
come in alignment with the word of God. We need to quickly seek the counsel of the Lord. We need to quickly get into a place of prayer immediately. Find the word, the scriptures, our homework that we had will help us identify what, what, why am I seeking a contingency plan? Something outside of what me and God originally discussed in order to maintain what he ultimately gave me. See, that that we, when we, when we began to operate in the flesh and we began to get fruit from the flesh, we think that we're doing something right because there's, there's, there's something that's being produced. But when we line it up, and we examine it towards the word of God and see that it's not of God, that it's been it's something that's been produced out of our flesh, then we have to deal with the consequences of that thing. Just ask Sarah. They had to deal with an Ishmael, right? Even though they were promised an Isaac. Don't sacrifice or create because this is what Jeroboam did because he was not obedient because he didn't keep his part of the deal with God. When God came and talked to him about what he saw for the kingdom and he decided, hey, this is what we're going to do in order to keep the people's heart towards me. Right. So if you got the man pleasing spirits on you, nine chances out of 10, there's some idolatry somewhere around you and you're not in alignment with the will of God, right? Because you want them to like you, love you and follow you and all this other kind of stuff. I don't want nobody following Lawan. I want you to follow me as I follow Christ. And the moment you stop seeing Christ, please about face and go the other direction. Because that, that's, what, that's what our call is for. That's what we've been positioned for. That's why we've been put in leadership. And I'm saying this because, again, many of us have incurred injuries we have gotten broken bones. We've gotten broken hearts. We've um, experienced disappointment. We're fractured in our souls. And so if you're saying you're not, you lie. And that's just the truth of the matter, because there's no way that you're going to walk this walk and not have some form of injury. That's why we need to talk about a recovery and recovering well, because in order to reign with him, you have to suffer with him. And with suffering comes pain. And with comes pain, there, there's some kind of injury somewhere if there's pain. And especially if we don't have a good revelation of that pain, if we haven't figured out the purpose of that pain, Pain will cause us when it's not dipped in the blood, when it's not sanctified, when it's not bathed in the word and prayer and worship to the true and living God. Pain will produce something else. It will produce golden calves. It'll produce an Ishmael. It'll produce the alternative plan. It will produce the permissive will of God instead of the perfect will of God. And so I don't know about you, but it is, it, it is my desire to stay in and be in the perfect will of God. And so let's look at the scriptures, line up on line, precept upon precept, okay? I don't want you guys to get lost in philosophy and not be able to find the word. Because that after, after I give you all of my commentary... All that's going to pass away, but behold, his word going to stand. So I want you to see it in the word in addition to the commentary, okay? When you take the commentary, the commentary is like icing on the cake. But this is the real cake. It says, if this people go up and do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the hearts of his people turn again unto their Lord. Even unto Rehovah, Re 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 
the king of Judah, and they shall kill me and go again to Re Rehoboam, Rehoboam, king of Judah. Now, the people ain't came to Jer Jeroboam and told him none of this. The only information that he has is that the people are going are 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 wanting to go to Jerusalem so that they can so that they can worship the true and the living God, which should not have been a problem. It should it should have been okay, because had he just been okay with it, there would have been harmony. There would have been he would have been in he would have been in the will of God, allowing God's people to worship him, to keep his commandments, right? So after all of this, this anxiety rose up in his heart, then he says, then he takes counsel in 28. And the counsel that he got said, hey, go make two golden calves. How many of you know that was bad counsel? Yeah. Yeah. It was bad counsel. Go make two golden calves and say unto them, it is too much. Now, my Bible, your Bible said, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your soul, with all that is within you, right? That's what my Bible say. And I'm sure this probably said the same when Jeroboam was, was doing what he was doing, right? But he said to the people, it's too much of a journey for you to go all the way to Jerusalem. I didn't make, because I didn't took an alternative plan. Now I want you to take an alter, a, 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 a alter, a, a, a alternative plan. I don't want you to stay on, on, on the right course either, because I didn't got off track. Now I need to get you off track. So leaders, Just because it's a good idea don't mean it's a God idea, right? Yeah. So we're seeing this in the scriptures that he took counsel. And out of the counsel of, 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 of Satan, of, of wickedness, of just stupidity, two golden calves pop out and he decides it's a good idea for it is too hard. Don't make that journey to Jerusalem because that's just too much for y'all of a sacrifice to go up there um, to worship the true and the living God. We're going to worship these two golden calves that that's not going to produce anything. And then he teaches a false doctrine by saying to them, he said, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods. Now, if you notice in the scriptures, the little G and the little L, it does not mean the one that created the heavens and the earth, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the omnipotent one, right? He uses the little G and the little L, little Lord and little God. He said, behold thy gods of Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So now he lied. So now I'm scared. I got idolatry going on. And now I'm, now I'm teaching false, false doctrine. So whenever we get in a place where we're not recovering well, we have to watch the doctrine in which we are teaching. Because that becomes, that, that starts to come out corrupt. It starts to come out perverted. Yeah, let's, we'll say a lot right there, just for a moment. That when we don't recover well, and we don't have that scripture premises on which we're recovering, we haven't named it. He didn't say, God, I'm afraid the people going to leave. He, he, this was his contingency plan when fear started talking to him and causing his imagination to run wild. And so now that my imagination is running wild, now I'm lying and telling you that two golden calves, that's the God that delivered you out of the land of Egypt. Shh. 
trauma, we have to recover and recover well. Because if we don't, we begin to cause the people to go in error. And the Bible says, woe be unto us that cause our people to error towards our God. Woe be unto us. So we, we have to be mindful that we're teaching the word of God again. If I go, if, if someone comes to my restaurant, it is my responsibility to make sure that the glass is clean. Even though I know they're hungry and they're thirsty, out of their hunger and their thirst and their desperation, they probably are going to drink out of a dirty glass. But guess what? They have to deal with the consequences of your disobedience and you have to deal with the consequences of your disobedience, right? Last week, we, 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 we discovered that Jeroboam's disobedience caused the life of one of his children. His wife had to deal with presenting a dead kid to Israel to say, hey, some ain't right. We're not in alignment with the will of God. And so I don't want something dead, something to die around us in order for us to get this message about recovering and recovering well. And this, this, and this is private. This is personal. This is not something that, that, that needs to be a public display because there are times that when we are wounded and we, um, and we have been in trauma that we're not beneficial publicly. We really do need to go in the cave until we hear from God, until we hear the still small voice, because the trauma of whatever it is that we're going through can end up making us a public spectacle. And this is what's happening to Jeroboam. He's failing publicly because he's not doing the private work. He's not talking to God in the secret place about his concern about the people going up to Jerusalem to worship. Because had he, had he had that private conversation with the Lord to say, hey, let's check back in. You said bring you back to the remembrance of your word. This is what we talked about in the beginning of this reign, that this is what I was supposed to do and this is what you would do. Now I see this happening Will this change? So I know the older people say you shouldn't question God, but I beg to differ. I believe if you don't, if you don't question God, you're going to forever be lost. And so, yes, we need to ask of the Lord. We need to inquire of the Lord when we are, have concerns, when we have questions, because our concerns and our questions, that is where the direction comes from. When we inquire of the Lord. David said it. He was he he came to the city and the and the women and children were gone. They stuff was gone. And he had to sit on a rock and encourage himself and inquire of the Lord. He said, wait a minute. We were off at battle. These men gonna be upset. I'm upset. I was excited about coming home. I didn't expect to come home to this kind of situation or circumstances. And this is what I walked into. He didn't take matters into his own hands. He inquired of the Lord. He said, Lord, what should I do? I've walked into this, this, this traumatic situation. My family is gone. The men that fought with me in battle, their families are gone. How do I lead them? What do I do in this moment? And that pause, that seek, that inquire, open the door for God to respond. And God said, look, pursue and overtake. That means that when I got the instructions from the Lord, there was a guaranteed victory 
no matter what the condition of the men were, no matter how many men were in the army, no matter what the weapons were, no matter where the enemy was, no matter what the where how the enemy was positioned, because the Lord sent me, because the Lord gave me permission, because the Lord gave me these instructions, I have a guarantee victory, right? When we follow God's instructions, once we've inquired and gotten his instructions and we follow it out, there is guarantee, it shall come to pass. It shall not be denied. Immediately, it takes place. Suddenly, it breaks. And so we want a sh uh, we we want to be to able to stand on a sure foundation, which is the word. If I'm suffering from a broken heart, I don't need to go on Facebook and tell everybody that my heart is broken and I am in despair and I have no hope. Why? Because that releases that that becomes contagious. Where other people say, well, if she couldn't recover, I know I can't recover. If he didn't heal her, I know I ain't got a chance. Right? So we have to be mindful of that. And so David did not present himself to the to his, his men, the soldiers, until he got an answer from God. Some of us need to stop presenting ourselves publicly until we get a private answer from God because we're causing error and we don't want to be like Jeroboam. We don't want to cause error, right? Amen. So that's where he went wrong, what he had in his heart, instead of leaning in into what the Lord told him, he allowed the emotions and the circumstances and the situations to get the best of him instead of allowing the word to be anchored in his soul, or even just to go back to God and say, hey, let did I hear you right? Is this what you said? So that I can I can be clear um on what on, on, on how I'm supposed to be positioned in this. And so that's so important. And so with that, we moved on last week where we dealt with what do you need to recover from? Putting a name on it. If you are listening and you are brave enough and have some courage, what are some of the things that you need to recover from? Or what are some of the things that you have recovered from? Um, put that in the comments. Share with, with, uh, with, with, with us what God is doing. Because the Bible says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimonies. That means that we've been tested and we didn't came out of it. That, that and we just learned um, Monday night. Don't be dry big. And if you ain't got the victory on it yet, just hold on, hold your peace, and let the Lord keep fighting the battle until you see your way out. Right? Um, can I recover from this? What were some of the scripture references that you used to confirm or affirm that that you are able and will recover? That whatever you experienced, it wasn't all that bad that you you were able to come out of it. You know, um, I know for me, uh, dealing with, you know, um, dealing with incest and, 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 and being sexually violated was was huge. And it was a place where I needed recovering um, because it was a place that I was continually violated by uh, by the person I trusted, you know, that I thought that loved me. And so when I found out that, um, uh, you know, how to work through that, when I became saved and I began to learn the word and I began to apply the word to work in my emotions and to work in my heart and even to work in my thought process, because there were times that I remember certain things from certain encounters from that sexual abuse, you know, from being abused, from being molested. Um, I remember certain, certain things would trigger and I would have to get the word of the Lord because I literally hated that person. 
and I and I would have to say, God, I forgive because I've been forgiven. Lord, I forgive because I've been forgiven. Because there will be an emotion that will stir up in me when I would hear this person's voice or when I would see them that would just it it, it felt it felt like anger, but I, it wasn't I wasn't really angry. I just knew I felt some type of way. And that was the enemy bringing up doubt about me forgiving that individual. Yeah. So just because I have that emotional feeling or that emotional prompting that's trying to make me uh, project bitterness or hatred or unforgiveness, that stuff, it has to come up. It, you, some of us do have memory recall. We have to put the word on that. I forgive because I've been forgiven. It's under the blood. He throws it. He he throws it in the sea of forgiveness. He look. It's so far as from the east is from the west. We got to put the word on that, and that's what I did when it came down to my thought process when I was remembering things or when I was in certain positions and and I was believing God to be healed and and to be whole in relationships and in in marriage and 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 being a parent and things like that. I, I had to. Um, some people say, Hey, that's extreme. You don't need to, you don't need to regurgitate the word for everything. Listen, I'm gonna tell you something. When the devil is on your track, I'd rather be extreme and then let God balance me out than to be lukewarm and he spew me out. Let me say that again. I'd rather be extreme with the word of God and let God balance me out than to be lukewarm and play with God and he spew me out. Big difference. So, and that's a whole other subject. Okay. So moving right along, recovering and recovering well. So now I have my scripture reference. How do I recover from this? Uh, tell us what, what did you do? Um, I, it used to be a struggle for me to journal, but now I'm doing that even better. I journal more now, um, and I'm even also voice recording, and I'm also writing letters to the Lord um, that uh, talk about, you know, my uh, my gratitude towards all the areas where He has really um, came in and healed me. So that's that that those are my methods. So I hope that some of that is helpful to you. So listen, so we're going to skip on over to, um, do, do, do. let me see here, because I got a lot of notes, a lot of paper, and we never really get to all of our notes and stuff. So why don't we skip over to, do, 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 do. Hmm. All right. So, yeah, let's do Romans 12 and 3. So I'm going to give three scriptures for tonight, and then we're going to wrap this up in a big old bow. So if my lovely assistant could come in and help me with reading... That'd be awesome. Fantastic. Romans 12 and 3. Yes, ma'am. The Bible says, For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Amen. So listen, Romans 3 says, stop thinking yourself highly than you ought to. So when I say that you need to recover and recover well, we need to recover and recover well. That means you and me. Romans 12 and 3. Yeah. It is by his grace that we are saved. It, it is not any work that we have done per se, that we're saved. But I do know 
that when it comes down to deliverance, salvation is just the beginning of this abundant life that God has promised us. We don't have to stop there. We can be made whole. I, 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 as the, the scripture declared, when Jesus called Lazarus out of the dead place, right? Because sometimes we're just dead. Forget recovery. We need to be resuscitated. All. We need to be resurrected, right? <laughs> so he called Lazarus out of the grave. But he didn't just call him out of the grave in his condition. He called Lazarus out of the grave and, and allowed and showed how he was made whole. He didn't just, he, he said, hey, I want you to come out of the grave, come out of the dead place, but now you're going to leave the grave clothes on. No. Meaning, I have a broken heart. Um, I'm going to put some band-aids on it, and I'm still going to do what it, I'm still going to try to figure out how to live this thing called life. That's not God's plan. That may be your plan, but that's not God's plan. God's plan is that we be made every which way whole. And so it takes grace. And so it takes us humbling ourselves. If, for I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. Let's think soberly. And what does that mean? Clear? Clear? Not to be drunk off emotion. Oh, I love him. Oh, I love her. Sometimes we get, we get drunk off emotion. We're not sober. Our hormones is all over the place. We're not sober. There are different chemicals, hormones in our body that releases stuff that we can be just as high as a Georgia pie. And we're not sober. So it ain't got to be something you smoking. It ain't got to be something you drinking that's got you intoxicated. You can be intoxicated off religion. Too much of anything causes you not to be sober. God desires that we have a just a, a balance, a, a, ba a just balance is a delight in the sight of the Lord. So we have to be balanced. We should not be thinking that we're exempt from sin, that we're exempt from death, that we're exempt from, uh, from chaos, that we're exempt from being uh, uh, offended. We're exempt from whatever have We are not unreachable or untouchable. We're, we're in this human body, we're in this human flesh, and it is going to suffer. And we need to know how to do it and do it in the sight of God. It says, don't think, but think soberly according to God has dealt every man the measure of faith. Now, I know that right now, um, how do I figure out how much faith I really do have? There, there were times in my life that I I didn't have enough faith to face it. And when I admitted that, God was sending the word because he knows what his word say. He said, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So since you don't have enough faith in this area, let me let you hear this so you can get an increase in faith, right? And so some of you are listening to me tonight. Um, I, I just want to give you a shot in the arm because you've experienced some devastating things and some traumatic things um, and, and, and just some, some things that caught you off guard. And I, I just want to say to you that there is nothing too hard for God, that there is nothing impossible with God. So I have another scripture for you, Matthews 1130. Let's run over there real quickly. Matthew 11, chapter 30, for, I mean, Matthew 11, verse 30. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. So let's, let's just process that, digest that. 
His this is Jesus. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. There are many of us that are carrying things that's way too heavy for us. We are putting pressure on our hearts. We're putting pressure on our respiratory systems. We're putting pressure on our bones. We're putting pressure on different, just, just all kinds of things. We're, we're, we're pressures everywhere. And here God is saying, take my yoke upon. My burdens are light and my yokes are easy. And what is what are the Lord's burdens? He wished that all would be saved and none would perish. It hurts God to send people. Hell was not created for us. And so that's a burden for God. That's a that's a burden for the Lord. You know, he died that we may have access to life and that more abundant. So that is a burden for him. And so when we take his burden to care for the lost, to feed the hungry, to see uh, the widow, to uh, speak to the father and the motherless, to provide uh, resources and outreach and to, to be the hands and feet in the earth so that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven to bring the gospel to them that are lost that's it that that that's his burden he wants he wants all of us to be able to receive the word he wants all of us to be able to receive salvation he wants all of us to have our name written in the lamb book of life and he said hey Whatever it is you worried about, whatever it is that got you weighed down, whatever's got you entangled, give me your stuff and here you take my stuff. Take my gospel into the highways and byways. Take my word into the prisons. Take my word. It's so, it's so much kingdom work to be done. And if we would just partner with God, our recovery process. He will see to it that we're healed. He will see to it that we're whole. He will see to it that our cup runneth over. But a lot of us are so busy picking at the sores and the, 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 the scrapes and the cuts. And, and we're so busy holding on to the brokenness and holding on to the disappointment. We're so busy with all of that. To where we can't let any of that go to take on his yoke. And we're so burdened down with other people's problems. To where we can't even really, when we when we take on those, the, those other people problems, if we're not giving them the word, we don't need to be, we don't, we, we just really don't need, no. No. Jesus got some burdens that I rather carry and Jesus has some yokes that I rather be connected to. And so I'm going to always offer an invitation for whoever is in my life to partner and join me in that journey, in this Jesus journey, right? Because that's where real healing happens. And our last scripture for tonight is going to be Revelations chapter 2. <sighs> I'm like, Lord, you sure do know how to close some stuff out. Thank you, Jesus. Revelations chapter 2, verses 4. Revelations 2 and 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Jeroboam left the first love, the first encounter that he had with God. And so if we're going to recover and recover well. Whatever injury, whatever assault, whatever 
chaos, whatever trauma you have experienced, it was designed to draw you away from the first love. And I'm here. And many of those that are joining in with me through intercession and through the prophetic word, we're here to press that reset button on the heart so that your heart will return back to your first love, which is the Lord. When you first got introduced to this gospel, to Jesus, there was so much passion, so much fervor, so much fire. But then life started happening. People started happening. Stuff started just going on. Um, you're getting older. Your children may have gotten older. Um, you've gone to a now you're at a different church or a different city or a different job. You're in a different location. All of that may have changed. But God says, I'm the same today, yesterday, and forevermore, and I change not. He has not changed his position about you or on you. And so before there's a war that you get in that you cannot win, like Jeroboam, he started a war out of his disobedience, and he lost. He lost the kingdom. He lost his family. He lost his legacy. There's no more to be read about him. There's nothing left. There's no seed in the earth. There is nothing to be heard of. All we know is what he could have been or what he should have been. But when we return back to our first love, when we get an alignment back with God, it it puts it puts the enemy in his place it puts us in our place it puts god in his place and that is really what makes the world go around when all of us are in our right place the devil's in hell god is on the throne and i'm in the earth right Amen. Praise God. So listen, whatever space you're in right now, um, this is a moment. I'm not sure I understand. My smart, dumb watch want to talk, but it's okay. She ain't got to understand. I'm going back to Jesus. I'm going back to the Lord. That's 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 what we need to understand on tonight. That when I am injured, when I am in need of repair um, from whatever has happened, I need to get back to God. I need to get back to my first love. Remember the first time he called your name? Remember the first time he woke you up? Remember the first time you spoke in tongues? Remember the first time you laid hands? Remember the first time you decided to, to speak the word? Remember the first time you prayed? Remember the first time you cried? Remember when you got baptized? It was when you first took communion? There are so many firsts. Oh, my goodness. And he has not stopped loving us. He has not stopped covering us and calling us and wooing us. He has not stopped, but it's up to us. It's up to us to turn back to him. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this moment and this time right now, for the heart that is seeking and searching for a savior, for the Redeemer, for the lover of our soul, God. Intervene, interrupt, intercept, God. In the name of Jesus, in that space, in that place that's been too tender for anybody to touch, for us to even receive anything from any other human, God. 
Lord, what man cannot fix, heaven definitely can heal. And Lord, we look to you. You said to look towards the hill for which cometh our help. All of our help come from you and you are present help in a time of trouble. And so tonight, God, we thank you for the release on tonight, God. We thank you that we don't have to be held captive by the opinions of man, that we don't have to be held captive by the behaviors of others, that we can lean in on your word, the agreement that we had in the beginning, that if I'm willing and obedient, I will eat the good of the land, God. If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, seek your face and call unto you and you would hear from heaven and heal the land. Same God, same God. Thank you, God, for hearing on tonight, for those that are seeking your face, those that are turning right now, God, Thank you, God, for meeting us right where we are, God. Thank you for meeting us at our measure of faith and giving us another word that would increase our faith, God. Thank you, God, for being faithful when we, Lord God, didn't know what to do, when we were clueless, when we had given up when we had let our imagination get the best of us, God, thank you for stepping in and causing a turnaround to happen, God, a suddenly to happen, God. Thank you, God, for healing the broken heart, God. Thank you for regulating the confused mind, God. Thank you, God, for casting down the imagination that would draw us from you, God. Lord, we repent. If we have led anybody astray by our behavior, if we led anybody astray from the words that we have spoken, God, if we've taken your word out of context because of hurt and pain, God, we repent on tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. And we say, God, like David said, creating me a clean heart and renewing me the right spirit, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we give you glory, honor, and praise for victory on tonight. We give you glory, honor, and praise for allowing us recovering and recovering well, God that we don't have to look that way again. We don't have to see that Pharaoh no more. We don't have to face that enemy another day because we have gotten total victory on today. In Jesus' name, amen and hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Bless the name of God. Bless the name of God. Listen, I don't know about you, but I received some freedom in my heart and in my mind on tonight. Man, listen, I felt my help. You hear what I'm saying? There are places where I felt helpless, but when I began to call on the name of Jesus, he's a present help right in that space in that place that I felt like I wasn't going, I couldn't breathe, like the wind was knocked out of me, but I called on the name of Jesus when fear tried to grip me, calling on the name of Jesus and everything just had to loose and let us go. Let us go free. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. God, you are mighty. You are awesome in all your ways, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Glory, glory to your name. Listen, if this has helped you or you know somebody that, that is in need of this, just please share. Like it, share it. Share with your your, your 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 friends, your people. Share with someone. And if you don't have to put it on their page publicly because they may be doing something private, send it to them in the inbox. Message them. Copy the link and send it to them so they can hear a way of escape. They can hear a way out. Amen. God bless you all. I'm going to ask the woman of God to come on back in. I think she has some announcements, but that is what the Lord has for us on tonight. You be strengthened in your inner man. You hear what I say? It is, it, look, ain't no time to be weak because when we are weak, he is being strong. So be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. Glory to Hallelujah. your name. Woo! Bless him. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. The word is fruitful, always blessed, always good. I hope you guys got some really good nuggets. Listen, at the bottom of your screen, I have a, a banner going up about the She Journey Milwaukee on May the 20th, this uh, next Saturday. No, it's this Saturday. Witness. Today's the 17th, y'all. This Saturday, She Journey Milwaukee. You still have time to come and join us. Go ahead and register. Uh, let us know. It is a free event. We are not asking for uh, anything for you to come in on this event. It is a free event and a safe place for you to unleash, for you to release, for you to take some of the weight off. Okay, it's an all women. This one is an all women event. So women of God, women of purpose, women looking for purpose, come May 20th in Milwaukee. Give us a, a shout on our website uh, or send us an email um, at pipe6. 2009 at gmail.com. If you need the address, you want more information, or you want prayer, you want one on one consultation. Prophetess does all of that. If you need that, um, come on the website, come talk to us, you know, um, visit us. We, 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 we don't have all the answers, but we can point you to the man that does. Amen. Amen. So she journey Milwaukee May twentieth this Saturday. Um, it is at nine a.m. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, ten a.m. at ten a.m. Visit our website for more information. Also, we are in a book. We are in chapter two of Pastor Lisa Turker's book, "Forgiving What You Can't Forget." You wow. guys. This book is fire already. Yeah. It took us two Mondays to get through chapter one. And I think the only reason why we got through chapter one is because we just kind of moseyed on along. But uh, whew, some healing yes. is yes. taking place on the line on Monday. Yes. So if you want to get the book and 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 and, and you you don't want to come on on Mondays because you're not that free yet but you want to talk to somebody message us email us we will we will journey with you through this book so that you can learn how to forgive what you can't forget because when the memory recall comes up you got to have a weapon Arms and ready, at the ready to disperse on that joker's behalf. You do not have to be taken out by your circumstances. You can recover all. You can forgive. You can be free. You can not only be free in your words, but your life can yes. live free. You can look and live free. Amen. Amen. Also, also, also. Whew. This ministry is on the move. I'm telling you, God is great in us. We will be June the, uh, the 2nd and the 3rd. We will be with um, World Outreach Center at the Women in Wealth Empowerment Sessions, part of the Women in Worship. I'm telling you, are you looking at the screen? We got the fabulous Pastor Melva Henderson, who is the senior leader, part of the senior leader at World Outreach Church. She is phenomenal. If you never heard her minister, you are missing it. Yes. Missing it. She don't yell. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. She don't yell, but you hear God. And you get the point. We have the awesome Dr. Medina Pullins that's going to be there. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. We have the awesome Sharon. I don't know how to say her last name. LaSure that's going to be there. We have Dr. Jazz in the building. Mm -hmm. I'm so stoked to hear Dr. Jazz, y'all. I promise you. And then we have... Um, what is this young lady's name? How do you say it? Well, we have the, the young lady. I think her name is Sharon. 
Sharon Arms is going to be with us on the June 2nd through the 3rd at the to um, the Todd Weir Theater in Milwaukee. Registration is still going on. You do have to pay to register for the day sessions. I believe the evening sessions are free. There's only one, there was only about a week or so ago, 100 seats left in this theater. So if you had plans to go and you on the fence, hop up off that fence. And That's then right. on Wednesdays, they are praying at 6 p.m. to 6.30. So yeah. you miss this Wednesday, but they have next Wednesday the 24th. And then the 31st, will pass the Melvin and her team. We'll be praying. Um, uh, next week, they're going to be talking about women. Um, I think they said in their purpose, marriages, their social, their social uh, life. Social purposes. Social purposes. So, like social injustices, praying for women that are really in those, uh, those areas that are dealing with social uh, social issues, um, reform. We have people that are actually in government. And so women are moving in government as well, too, that are working on policies, how it affects the communities and things like that. Amen. So we'll be praying as it relates to those things as well. That is awesome. And we will, we uh, also will be streaming in the women's prison. Pastor Melva got the, the information that we're going to be able to stream the services in the women's prison. So you guys, this ministry partners up with ministries that are doing the work of the kingdom, not just lip service. We're doing the work of the kingdom to get the word of God to every, till all have heard, till all have heard the glory of God. Hallelujah. Another thing, and I'm about to let y'all go, but I can't let you go without telling you that the Warriors of Love is on the Watsers. Woo! On the Watsers. I love it. Warriors of Love 2024 flowing on the Watsers. We will be going to the Virgin Islands, you guys. We are cruising with Jesus. Glory to God. Yes. We are going to have a fantabulous time. Listen, the early bird special is going on right now until June 30th. You have until right now, until June 30th, to pay your deposit of $250. That secures your seat, secures your cabin yes. on the Norwegian breakaway. Okay, your first monthly payment is not even due until the month of August. So you have the rest of the summer to get ready to pay. Or you could take that time and say, hey, I want the balcony with the hammock and the beautiful view for 1819. Hallelujah. I'm going to go ahead and pay my 250. Knock that's that right. off. And then I got the balance that's left. And I'm going to go ahead and knock that out in August. You could do that. We'll accept that. You may even get a gift for being the first ones to have your payments in. Okay? So there's so much that is going to be going on. I am going to leave the detail flyer up for the next uh, next Wednesday's event. I'm not going to leave it up a long time because I am going to pull it down so that the Recover series uh, uh, banner is up there. So, you guys, from now until June 30th, you have that time to go ahead and register. Scan the QR code, visit the website, email us for more information, get your $250 in to secure your cabin. Because once all the cabins is, because they're going to have other people there. We're not the only as ones. So when all the cabins are full, guess what? So, and I think um, too, we are only uh, traveling with what I think we have like, we're like 15 cabins. Yeah, we, we have 15 cabins. My goal, our goal, our goal is to get about 30 guests. That's the goal. Once we cap out, if we cap out at our 15 cabins, then okay. But if we get our 30, 
Yeah. So I, yeah, I just want to encourage everyone to not um, drag, slow drag on this. Like, I would. We're giving you a whole lot of time to really prep your people. You find your babysitter because this is an all adult retreat. And listen to me. This is your mother in Zion calling all you sons of thunder out of the caves and out of hiding, out of them, out of get off the couch, binge watching and getting fat and get on a cruise. Treat yourself to a vacation, man. You don't have to be with some significant other to be a part of this, but you yourself can explore and get some culture about yourself so that when you find this good thing, you got something to offer her. Y'all got actually something to talk about. So I'm encouraging you to please share this with your uncles, your nephews, all of them men that want to bend the block, that it is more to life than your block then your uh, city, then your, your job, and all them other little places that you go. Let's get a world view on life. Get on the boat with us and get on the water too. Men, don't let these women out travel you because they traveling. Then when they get back, you ain't going to know what to do with them. So you might as well get on the water and have you some fun. Get get connected with the lord get in the spirit while you own the water but this is an adult retreat for men and women and, and and whether you're married or not married folks you're welcome but i also want to make this cry out to you single men because i'm gonna tell you something when i was out on the dating market you jokers were not out there so i take it y'all was in the house on the couch somewhere strolling on facebook so since you're strolling go book you a vacation right a vacation of freedom you have nobody to tell you to, to, to when to come in your cabin you ain't got nobody to tell you what not to eat just come on and have you some fun as well too because the women they doing it they doing it. They is traveling. They 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 got their passports. They going everywhere. And I'm calling my sons, sons of thunder. Where y'all at? We need the being to show up. Let's show up on the water. All right, I'm done campaigning. <laughs> Amen. So you guys have heard the clarion call. This is an adult only retreat. There is no children that will be allowed with the warriors of love. Now you want to book it and be outside of warriors of love. That's fine. You won't get our pricing. There are no children allowed with the warriors of love. We want to retreat relax, be refreshed, be restored, be replenished. Amen. So we are not I'm trying to help you navigate babysitting and all those other things. We want you to have fun. Okay. You can come back and be refreshed and go love up on them babies. Cause I know when I come back, I'll be ready to love up on my grandbabies, you know, my, you know, and my children. I, I got to remember I have children as well, but my two, I'll be wanting to love on my babies. I promise you. So uh, yeah, you guys book early bird special now through June 30th, after June 30th, Ju um, um, July 1st, the price goes up two hundred more dollars. If you there have is not no exception, there is no exception. I will. Uh, I won't. As the administrator, I won't be taking any. See what had happened was July first. It goes up two hundred dollars. So to save yourself two hundred dollars, book now. Don't delay. Book now. Okay, and secure your spot. That is all that we have for you. This is your girl, Lady E, saying thank you for tuning in to Recover All Series with Prophetess LaJuan smith Harris. We love you. We appreciate you. God loves you. God appreciates you. God wants you. God needs you. God cares for you. And we speak Psalms 4 and 8 over your life that you will lie down and sleep in peace. For you, O oh Lord, makes us all dwell in safety. God bless you. Good night, everyone. Good night.